Hello everyone and welcome back to Super Tech Services. Today we've got a really cool video for you. We're going to be swapping out the printer control board on a Konica C754E. So this procedure uh, actually starts with the control panel, then you swap the board and end with the control panel. And I'm going to show you how to do that. But first, I want you guys to please like and comment because you're not going to want to miss this video. Stay tuned. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do is back up the engine board. So to do that, just go ahead and hit Menu, Counter, Display Keypad, Stop 00, Stop 01. Let that load up, and then hit Stop 0C, just like that. Then go ahead and hit Engine Data Backup, and then select Engine Data Save Mode. Go ahead and hit start. Do you want to begin? Select yes and then start. Once the result says OK, you can go ahead and power down and then we'll move on to removing the board. Okay, so to remove the board, just start removing the back screws like you see uh, here that I'm doing and just remove the dust filter. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I think on the left side and like one, two, three on the right. So just take your time in removing those and then you should be able to get the uh, back panels off. Uh, some people take off the top cover, but um, as you can see here, that's not necessary. You can, uh, you can jiggle the covers out. Just uh, usually you might have to wiggle them from the bottom out first. Sometimes you have to wiggle it from the top. Just just kind of play with it, and you'll eventually get it out. Just like you can see here. I just lift it up on the panel a little bit, and then I'll be able to get this board right off. I mean, get the panel off. All right, so the board on the left is the MFP board. The board on the right is the printer control board. We'll be changing the board on the right. All right, like I said, the board on the left is the MFP board. That's the board that um, deals with printing and has the MAC address, the hard drive, and all that kind of stuff on there. The board on the right is the printer control board. That's the one that takes in all these inputs and outputs, uh, deals with logic and stuff. So the first thing I'm going to do is release the ribbon cables just to get those out of the way. The one on the left, you have to actually uh, lift up on the brown plate. And the one on the right, you can just pull out directly. Now I've been doing this for quite some time so um, I am going a little fast here but um, what you want to do is just make sure you get a hold on all the wires and pull and you actually want to snug it with a decent amount of force. Uh, if, you, if you try to tug on it too lightly uh, it may pull the wires out. If you go too fast you may pull the wires out as well. Especially if the machine's been sitting for a long time these can feel like they're locked in. Now there's some other ways to get these out. Um, you can use a flathead or maybe some pliers, but I I just like to pull by hand. Now if you have any that are stuck, just move on and just keep pulling out, and then save the ones that are stuck for last and try to get those out. Um, um, just more methodically, try to be a little bit slower about getting those out. As you can see, there's quite a bit of connectors. but just slowly work your way around completely work your way all the way around and get all the connectors out one note to do is to release all the wire harnesses it makes it a uh, lot easier to get the board out um, as you're gonna see in a little bit I didn't release all the wire harnesses and I struggled a little bit to get the board completely out so just make sure you completely loosen all the wire harnesses and get the wires out of the way. When the wires are out of the way, the board can come out really easily. So I believe all the I got all the wires out of the harnesses, and I'm just going through and releasing all the screws. I think there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these screws. I start with the bottom first just to keep the board from falling, and then I'll move to the sides. 
and then the top corners and then the last one uh, screw at the top okay I'm just gonna move to the top here and get the last three screws Should be one more on the left here and then one more in the middle. All right, and that's the last screw and the board is loose. As you can see, it fell down a little bit. So this is like, uh, like I said, try to get the wire harnesses out. If I had them out of place, the board would have slipped out really easily, but you're gonna see I'm gonna struggle a little bit here to get it out and uh, finally it will come loose try not to bend any of the ribbon cables uh, those things are very sensitive the other uh, harnesses are pretty durable but the ribbon cables just try not to bend them as much as possible as you can see I release one of the wire harnesses here another one at the bottom just to free up a little room and this should allow me to remove it now alright and just like that the boards out so now we're gonna go ahead and put the replacement board in and this takes usually takes a little bit longer to um, to get the board in Okay, so I've doubled the speed of this video because it takes a little bit longer. So here's the replacement board, and I'm going to go ahead and install that. There's so many connectors, I didn't want to bore you guys with a 20 minute long video. So I doubled the speed, and you'll see, just uh, slide it in. Uh, I'll probably add a little bit of music right here. So just enjoy uh, me putting in all the harnesses first, and then I'll do the ribbon cables last. But uh, first, let's do the screws, then the harnesses and then we'll do the ribbon cables.
All right, so I'm finishing up here with the right side, just getting the last harnesses in here. And then um, after they're in, just make sure you get them into the wire harnesses, as you'll see me do. And then when you have everything in, you want to go back around one last time and just make sure that all the harnesses are plugged in and that you didn't leave one behind the board. I remember years ago I put a board on and uh, had an error code right away. Could not find what it was. Come to find out I left one of the connectors behind the board that I just didn't see. So just uh, one of those things you want to go back through and make sure that all the connectors are plugged in. One good thing to do is to actually count the connectors. I counted th uh, 38 of them, so you can actually go through and, and count. Because there's um, sometimes you'll notice that there's a harness or two that didn't have anything plugged in, and you don't want to be second-guessing yourself. So you can count them or just make a mental note. As you can see here, I'm just going back through, putting my finger on every single harness, making sure that, it's, um, that the harness is plugged in correctly. And that's just good practice just to make sure that uh, nothing was left half hanging because trust me, you don't want to troubleshoot these things uh, multiple times. All right, so I'm putting the ribbon cable in on the right-hand side, and that one just slides right in. The one on the left-hand side, this one you press in as well, but then have to uh, press down on the brown um, clamp that kind of locks it in place. I'm sorry, I didn't have the camera on that angle, so you can't really see me do it, but um, it's pretty easy. Just be gentle. All right, so we're all done. Uh, we're going to fire up the copier, and I'm going to show you guys the last steps. All right, now that we've got the board installed, let's go ahead and power up. Now, you should get a code here, an error code. C4802 should be displayed. Do not freak out when you see this. That is completely normal. Let's just give that a minute to boot up. All right, so obviously we got a C4802 code. Cool, so what we're gonna do is we wanna get into the service mode now. Let me make sure you guys can see this. Perfect. All right, so let's just hit menu, counter, display keyboard, Stop, zero, stop, oops, I'm sorry. Let's just close again. Stop, zero, zero, stop, zero, one. Once we're in, we're gonna do the same thing again, which is stop, zero, clear. All right, now when we're in there, let's uh, select engine data backup. and select engine data reflect mode. Press the start button. Do you want to begin? Yes. Hit start. When okay is split, uh, we already got, the result is okay. Now we can go ahead and reboot the copier. And after that, everything should be working properly. Let's go ahead and reboot. Turn back on. Let that boot up and I'll be right back. All right, as you can see, the copier is just booting up like normal. Pretty simple, easy process. It's really cool if you need to swap out uh, printer control boards. This also works for the MFP board. I may do a video on that um, another day. But uh, thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe again. That's how you change the uh, printer control board on a Konica C754. This works for other models. I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye-bye.